What is up everybody? This is Twice Crispy here and I'm coming to you today to give you three reasons about why you're stuck in a low elo in Overwatch. For the sake of this video, we're going to be looking at anyone in gold or below as low elo because gold is perfectly average and anything below that is subpar. Some people might see platinum as also being low elo, but since they are slightly above average, we're not going to be looking at mistakes that platinum players make. Recently, I created a new account and decided to derank that account all the way down into the deep, dark pits of hell known as bronze. And I landed all the way at 1050, which is pretty darn bad. If you've ever been down there playing, you know what it's like, you know it's not pretty, and you know you want to get out of there. But what can you actually do to improve your SR rating? Today, I'll be going over three broad topics with some subtopics of each about why you're in low elo and how to get out. You have a low skill level. There are many different ways to be considered being good at Overwatch, and believe it or not, not all of those ways include getting headshots with Widowmaker or shooting a Pharah out of the sky with Soldier 76. Although getting crispy headshots with the Widowmaker can really help a team fight, there are plenty other roles you can fill where you don't need to have perfect aim. Okay, so you really love playing Soldier 76, but your tracking is really not the best that it could be. So why are you in here playing competitive because you want to fill a role? The problem with this is that if you can't aim, you need to go practice aiming. If you can't aim, you're dragging your team down by not filling your role properly. So hop out of competitive, get back into some quick play, or even go play against the AI. Because if your aim is shit, you're going to keep seeing your SR drop way, way down. Secondly, in this low skill level topic, we'll look at only being able to play DPS characters, or claiming at least that you can only play those characters. We know that's bullshit. We know it's- oh, hey, wait a minute. Why am I getting beeped here? I'm pretty sure I just said shit a minute ago and- Now why am I getting censored all of a sudden? Listen, the point is, you don't need to be great at aiming in order to be great at Overwatch. If you suck at aiming and you really want to play competitive, go pick up a character that doesn't require as good of aim or even aim at all. You can play characters like Moira, Winston, Diva. Roadhog. There's a ton of characters out there where you don't need to have perfect tracking in order to play them effectively and have your team benefit from you playing that role. You can only play one hero, and if I had to guess, that one hero is Junkrat. I'm sorry, but there are a lot of terrible Junkrat players in low elo. He's easy to spam, he can hide anywhere and bounce shots off of walls, he never needs to show his face if he doesn't have to. But that's probably why your win rate with Junkrat is at 32%. If you're not winning more than half your games as your main hero, you need to move on. You need to give up the passionate love that you have for that hero and go find somebody else to play. And I've got another video you can check out that explains how and why you should go learn to play new heroes too. So make sure when you're done here, you go over and watch that video as well. No teamwork. All the way from bronze up to gold, it's difficult to find teams that have coordinated teamwork. You might be a terrific reaper player, but you're never with your team during team fights. Are you at the spawn when they're at the point, and then by the time you get to the point, they've died and now they're back at the spawn? A huge problem is that people in low elos seem to think that you're somehow losing the game more the less time you're contesting the point. Well, if you're only contesting and you're not actually capturing, you're wasting time just doing that. So take 10, 15, maybe even 30 seconds to actually group up Make sure everyone on your team is with you, together, not 50 feet ahead. And make sure you go in as a team. Pick a route that you want to go, stick to the plan, and if the plan's not working, change it up. So now you actually need to make a plan. 
person that makes the plan is probably going to be your team leader, which is usually your main tank, or at least should be your main tank. Your main tank is going to guide the fight. Where they go, you should go. Even if they don't have a plan, you follow that main tank, unless you're a flanker. Has your team tried going left on Temple of Anubis five times already, and the enemy bastion is just mowing through you guys? Well, guess what? Surprise, there's a right path to go. You can get to the top building. You can avoid that bastion behind cover. Try something new. If your plan doesn't work, ditch it, get something else. Now you can't have a plan if you're not in voice chat and you have no mic on. I understand not everyone can afford a mic, especially with the d price of computers lately. But maybe you don't need to buy another pack of loot boxes. Maybe you really need that headset. And maybe I'll link some headphones below that aren't total sh and that you can buy for relatively cheap. And it's going to help your teamwork skills improve tremendously. You have crappy callouts. A big part of playing in Overwatch is being able to call out what's going on the field and where your teammates can benefit from making a move. Letting someone know that the enemy Zenyatta has a golden weapon is not really going to help. On the other hand, if that golden weapon Zenyatta just killed you on the point and he's just one shot away from death, let your team know to fall back and kill him off before he solo caps. You also don't need to tell your team every time you die. We're aware. We can see it on the field where there's a little, uh, a little bit of skull and crossbones there that, yeah, somebody just died. We can press tab. We can see who's on the field. Now, if you're a support character, it might be helpful to say, like, hey, I'm a support. I'm down. Or, hey, both supports are down right now. Be careful. And sometimes just listening is the best thing you can do. If you're really bad at making callouts, if your callouts last more than five or six seconds, then you can probably cut that down to a lot less so people can get the point very quickly. If you can't do that, just shut the hell up. Nobody needs all that clogging up the airwaves. I'm trying to listen for footsteps around me because there's a tracer back here. I don't need you in my ear barking. Lastly on this subject of teamwork, if you're making crappy callouts, your game sense probably sucks. So if your game sense sucks, you need to go back and learn fundamentals of how to play a team-based game like this. Absolute sh attitudes. Is your team really losing these fights and it seems to be everyone else's fault but your own? Are you letting these guys know how much they suck and why they're doing so poorly? How do you suppose that's going to motivate your team to do any better if all you're saying is negative stuff to them? Nobody wants to hear that. Maybe try encouraging your team to group up, or change characters, or just do something different than what you're currently doing. But telling people like, hey, you're at the DPS, get the fuck out of here, probably is not going to do any good. Is there someone on your team that's doing particularly bad, and then all of a sudden over the mic you hear, yo, thing, get the fuck off the DPS if you can't do your job. Why the fuck do you think you can come into comp and ruin everyone's game? What the fuck wrong with you? Why you get the fuck out of here, you little dick bitch? Oh yeah, let me tell you how motivated your team's gonna be after that's said. That's pretty much a surefire way to lose a match if you're the one getting shitty with people. If you're not that person, immediately put them on mute and encourage everyone else in your team to mute them too. You don't need to hear shit from them anymore. The only thing they're gonna accomplish is dragging everyone down and pretty much throw the match. Yeah, that's right, I said it. You can throw the match by being a piece of shit people on the voice chat. Going hand in hand with that, is having a big ego. Having a big ego really sucks when you have to deal with that on your team. No, you're not carrying us as Reaper or Junkrat or Farah or whoever you think just because you have gold damage and kills. Somebody's gotta have it. It doesn't mean that you're doing so much better than everyone else. Okay, yeah, so in some circumstances you might be carrying the team, but it's not like you can do 1v6. Alright, the, the the team plays a role here, so just, just cool out with your big head and your ego, and learn that without the other five people on your team, you're not going to do sh**. You don't know when to quit. There are a ton of people out there that get into these horrible elos and season lows and never reach their season high again just because they don't know when to stop playing. A good rule to follow so you don't keep going lower is if you lose two matches in a row, stop playing comp. 
go play quick play, go play arcade, go play a different game. Go out for a walk, get some fresh air. I don't fucking care what you do, just stop playing competitive. The more you lose, the more likely it is that you're going to keep losing because you get tilted and upset and you're going to bring your other teammates down with you. And that's not fair to them, it's not fair to yourself, and if you're trying to boost your score, continuing to play while you're on a losing streak is going to do nothing good for you. Similarly, playing tilted or mad is going to make things just as bad as playing if you're on a losing streak. Now you might not be on a losing streak yet, but you also might not be too thrilled about whatever's going on in your day or your game. Yeah, you start getting angry, I get it, shit happens sometimes, but you know what? You can't play like that. You don't win when you're mad, so keeping a positive attitude and an upbeat spirit is going to be a much more beneficial to you winning and gaining SR instead of being shitty and losing SR. So hopefully this was a wake up call for you and it'll help you improve your game and get out of the elo you're in and into something higher. If you thought this was helpful, like the damn video, subscribe to the channel and tune back for more tips later on.